Good morning and warmest welcomes to Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. I'm the Reverend Jimmy Abbott, the priest here at Trinity, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for our special online service for Sunday, July 17th, 2022. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please visit trinitygalv.org. That's our website. You can learn more about our church. You can make a financial gift. You can also reach out to us so that we can get you more connected to the life of our church. Please also make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can get our weekly YouTube Bible studies as well so that you can continue to grow in your knowledge and love of the Lord right here at Trinity in Galveston. Please know that our in-person in-person worship services are held every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. 8 a.m. is a simple spoken service of Holy Communion, while 10.30 a.m. has Holy Communion with organ and music in our children's program as well. If you are at home and would like me to bring you Holy Communion, please by all means reach out to the church office, and I would be honored to come into your home to share the sacred meal with you and with your family as well. Our online service this morning begins with a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent of Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Here ends the lesson. Now, you all should have seen it this week at Trinity Church. There were buckets and buckets of popcorn pudding cups as far as the eye could see, gummy worms and pretzels and goldfish, an endless stream of ice cream scoops. It was snack time at Vacation Bible School. Ninety-four children descended upon our campus to learn about God, to play games, to have fun, and oh yes, to have snacks. The whole thing was an amazing week, and to me it was a sign, a symbol of hope, for what we know is in our future. Those 94 children came from Trinity Episcopal Church, Grace Episcopal Church. They came from Trinity Episcopal School and from the wider community. You, the people of Trinity Church, you welcomed them with open arms, and the adults, the adults who taught those children, they walked with them from station to station. They helped crying children, and they cut apple slices till their hands hurt. Those adults came from Trinity Church and Grace Church and Trinity School and the William Temple Center for UTMB students. It was an amazing outpouring and a community effort. Now, granted, this week was also very tiring. It required sacrifice and energy and just a whole lot of time and patience and money. But if something is worth doing for the Lord God, It must be worth doing all the way. That's one of the lessons we take from Abraham. The story from Genesis says, The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. 
I wonder if the heat of the day by the Oaks of Mamre was anything like Galveston last week. It goes on. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing there. These strangers, these visitors, these guests are of and from the Lord God. And if Abraham was going to greet them, to make them feel at home, he had to go all the way. Abraham rushes to Sarah and tells her to start making bread. And notice they use choice flour, not the moldy flour in the back of the pantry. And don't reheat yesterday's bread. Make some new cakes and make them good. And that amount of flour they use, that's five pounds of flour for three people. That's ridiculous. Five pounds of flour, not to mention the fatted calf and the cottage cheese that Abraham is throwing on top of it. Abraham had told his guests he was going to bring them a little bread. That's the understatement of the century. Abraham and Sarah prepare a preposterous feast. If something is worth doing for the Lord God, it is worth doing all the way. Now, I don't know about you, but this lesson hits me square between the eyes. Far too often, my prayers are short and distracted. Far too often, what I give to God are the measly leftovers of my time, talent, and treasure. Far too often, I hold the best stuff back for myself. Every single day of my life, the Lord God shows up, and I'm not sure that I go to the trouble that Abraham and Sarah do. And I know this happens in congregations, too. We content ourselves with good enough. We're happy with who is here, not realizing or not seeing the masses of people looking in, people whom the church has forgotten or has hurt. We are far too complacent, settling for a little bread when we ought to be throwing a preposterous feast. I know I'm being critical of the church, but it's only because I have such high expectations for the church, for myself, and for us. Perhaps that's what was so invigorating about last week. You all, you measured out the choice flour, you killed the fatted calf, you bent over backwards for all of these children, but most of all, you served. More than the food and the cost to Abraham, he served. Those strangers from the Lord God, they show up at Abraham's tent in the heat of the day. Abraham doesn't tell them to come back when it's cooler he doesn't point them in the direction of the next settlement. No, he stoops down and washes their road-weary, dirt-encrusted feet with his own precious water. And then while his visitors eat, he stands beside their table as a servant. This is Abraham, mind you, the man who has been called by God from Ur of the Chaldeans to lead a great nation. This is Abraham who has been blessed by the priest Melchizedek. This is Abraham who has made a covenant with God. And here he is, a servant performing the most menial tasks, washing feet, serving the table. Measuring out pretzel sticks, tying the shoes of rambunctious children. If something is worth doing for the Lord God, it must be worth doing all the way. And the payoff? The fruit of this labor? The Lord God promises Abraham and Sarah a son of their own. They receive hope for the future. That's exactly what played out here this week. We worked hard, yes, but this week we also saw a glimpse of our future. I believe that our vacation Bible school this week was a promise of what is to come. See, this past year we've been working hard on strengthening our partnerships with the other Episcopal churches and organizations on Galveston Island. The clergy and staff and leaders of all the Episcopal churches and groups have committed to working together for the common good. And that work has borne fruit this week. As we saw Trinity Church and Grace Church and the school and the William Temple Center come together for one common mission, to serve these children. This is our future. 
So imagine with me what a blessing it will be to have closer ties to our sister congregations at Grace and St. Augustine of Hippo. Imagine the school and our medical students and St. Vincent's House all with a shared mission and with common goals. No doubt about it, it's going to be hard work. It's going to take time and energy and money. It's going to take us getting down in front of our neighbors and serving them, but we have to do it. Because if it's worth doing for the Lord, it must be worth doing all the way. You know what we say about ourselves. Trinity Church was founded in 1841, and we're still making history. Now is the time to make that history. Finally, I want to flip this passage around. And we'll hear just how much God loves us. Flip the story around and we see that Jesus is the host and we are the travelers. Tired, thirsty, worn out from the exhaustion and worry of daily life, we end up here in God's tent, in God's house, in the heat of a Galveston summer. He doesn't wash our feet, but he washes our souls clean in those baptismal waters. You see it, right? That's why we walk by the baptismal font on our way into the church, to remember that our Lord stoops down to refresh our weary souls in those restorative waters. And then God speaks to us. Imagine that God would speak to us through the Bible, through music, through beauty, through art, and then the Lord God prepares this preposterous feast for us. The Lord God prepares this meal, Christ's own body and flesh and blood. This is not a little bread and a sip of wine. This is so much more, so much better. It is the body and blood of Christ given for you. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing all the way as Jesus would even dare to die for us, to offer himself so that we may live. The Lord God doesn't bake the bread or prepare the fatted calf or serve us the curds and milk. He goes farther than that. The Lord offers his own son for us. He goes all the way. Because remember, you are worth it. In the eyes of God, you are worth serving. You are worth saving. You are worth restoring. You are worth feeding. You are worth dying for. There's no better news than that. God wishes to serve you, to bless you, to welcome you into our Lord's eternal courts. That is also the promise, the blessing of our future. When our souls are gathered before the Lord in death and we are greeted, welcomed into our eternal homes at the resurrection from the dead, when we will see all those who have gone before us and when we will see God face to face, we know that is our future because that is what God has already done for us on earth as it is in heaven. It was a lot of trouble for God to go about creating us, sustaining us, dying for us. But God went all the way. Because to God, you are worth it. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers, thanksgivings, and intercessions. You may put them in the comment section or the chat box. You may also offer them up to God simply where you are. And please know that if you have any specific prayer requests, please reach out to the church office so that I can hold those in my prayers and share those with our prayer team as well. Together, we pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And finally, I invite you to say the collect of the day with me. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which we for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for joining us for this special online service here from Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. By all means, please reach out to us so that we can get to know you and pray with you and grow with you in faith here in our ministry at Trinity. And now for a final blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.